All right, so in the last video, you could see how I, I hand set each of my letter forms. And I'm kind of squinting and looking, and it's, it's giving me some nice negative spaces around my illustration that are supportive of it. Um, remember, I can do more than just rotate and scale and pinch. I can also like weight them differently. So because they're on their different layers, I can go in and turn on layer styles for individual ones just for black. So the easiest thing is if I want to thicken it up, I can add a stroke of black. We'll get into the color options after we figure out you know, how it looks best in just black on the outside. And I could try you know, just a slight thickening to give it more variation. So that's a one point thickening that can be turned on and off. I can also play with, while still keeping it a vector, Control T and right clicking within the transform box and playing with something called distort, which lets me tug at kind of individual edges differently than other edges. That looks very much like scale, to be honest. So control T, let's try another. Let's try perspective. And again, it's just like the scale tools. I was hoping for more from that. But because it is a, a vector type tool, we do lose the ability to warp it. but you do have full control of the different edges, right? Let's see if I hold down option. Yeah, we'll just do it towards the middle. And just like when we were compositing our creatures, I would say the same kind of things hold. Even though I have two repeating O's, I don't want them to look absolutely identical, unless I'm going for something that looks really clean and cold. I want this to look more hand done. So what I'm gonna do is take all of these layers, put them into a folder, and then duplicate that folder, knowing that that's safe, and then try to mess with it more. So what if I place them a little differently? This is all kind of the layout games we play. And I can't do this endlessly, because I want to be able to move on. But you know, I'm going to make the G bigger. This is kind of the Stranger Thing example, right? You can do lots of different variations. I'm going to jog that one back. I'm going to nudge this one forward. I know that one's a little bit thicker. I'm going to make the D bigger. Because we're using digital art, we can make perfect copies. There's no reason not to try some variations before we're committed. I still want it to kind of balance on the same edges. Yeah. And do I like that more or do I like that more? For this example, I think I like that more. I'm just going to lengthen my, uh, my O a little bit. So I'm looking at the spacing between the letters. I want them all to be readable and feel balanced. 
I'm looking at kind of the eye movement running through them. Okay. Now, if I know the approach I want, I can duplicate that in my case, bring that whole copy over to the other side. And because these are all type layers, which I want you to keep, I can then edit them. Come on. As easily as if they were in a word processing program. And I'm actually going to do the P separately. And I can keep my blocking sketch in there to kind of inform it. So I'm already going to start customizing because I know I have five letters instead of four, but I want the visual weight to feel similar but maybe not the exact same. So kind of like that, kind of flaring out on each side. So I'm not matching my blocking exactly, right? I'm taking up the same visual space of my blocking. And then the O, let's see. Let's just really play with it. So it's not a copy and paste from before. Then I'm going to duplicate it because I have to fit the I in there. And then play with stylizing that. So I was thinking straight up and down or close to it. Oh, distort's kind of fun. You kind of sweep with it. And so even though I have only kind of um, warped and stretched the typefaces, the most important thing to begin with is the blocking of them, like how much space they get in between, the angles they're set at, it's the typesetting that's kind of tricky. I think that's going to work. Like ladders, building. And like so many things in digital art and in art in general, you have to kind of see the different solutions before you know what's going to, to work best.
This is a tricky one. I think I might try something. Yeah, let me try that. I can make the O a lot smaller. I have to work with my blocking sketch. Make the N a little bit smaller. So hopefully through compositing and everything, you've realized how much power you have in these tools. And type, which seems so simple, can really make a difference how you use these tools to bring it out. Pretty thick I, so about the same weight as the P and the T. So it reads, makes sense. If I want to thicken this O up, I'm going to put a layer style on it and just one picture. So that's pretty good. I like that. But let's uh, bring it all together. So I can take that whole folder now and putting it in a folder makes allows me to move it as a whole and even to rotate it as a whole. Kind of a tattoo design. And then the fun of this makes me think, oh, I got to play more with this, right? So you work it back and forth. And hopefully by, by doing this, you'll come to the best overall approach for your type. It will feel very customized. And then we'll go in and we can add things to the type as well further customize it we can erase things away from it once we have it at the right resolution then we can rasterize it and and make it exactly what we want but this is all this kind of placement all of this blocking all of this typesetting we do while it's still an editable vector type layers Using the arrow keys to nudge can be really helpful at these little spacings. And each time I'm distorting it and scaling it, it's customizing it slightly from the original design, basically making it an italicized version. So understanding the principles of type will help you communicate better with it and have better variation. Now, if I have all of those angles not matching, I don't want to have the O and the D matching. Because that will become...